good morning, and thank you for tuning into the Andrew Tate Show, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. We've got a great show for you guys today. We're going to be covering uh, Ryan Pohl's promise to Justin Fields, uh, Kenny Pickett backing up Jalen Hurts. A man returns from vacation with a letter saying he's deceased, and make sure you stick around for later in the show when we'll be diving into our oddities of the day. Before we start, I'd like to ask that you guys like and follow the show. Also, we get a number of questions from viewers that come in during the show, so to ensure that your question gets read on the air, I ask that you use the tips and donation link with your question. The tips and donation link is gsmcpodcast.net. This puts your question at the top of the list so that I can see it, and it also just really helps the show. Hello, Tate. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. I, <laughs> to fill everyone in, before this, I was talking to Faith about being stressed out, like yeah. everything that's going on. Yesterday, I'm doing my meetings, and then power goes out everywhere. <laughs> and I'm like, holy crap. So I send Faith a message, not knowing how long power is going to be out, mm -hmm. sales tire is out, and things like that. And I'm like, uh, Faith, you may be doing the show by yourself. I was like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> so I stress I, I stress faith out as well. So yeah. uh <laughs> which I mean surprise. I was already stressed out, so what's new? <laughs> what's new? <laughs> so yeah. I made it here, didn't even miss a show. Yes. Life is good. I'm very grateful for that. <laughs> <laughs> Faith was gonna have to talk all sports by herself. Yeah. Which is something that she's she's a little nervous about doing. Yeah. Yeah. The sad well, thing about it is she knows this stuff. She's just a little you know, it's, nervous it's about it. It's talking it's e see, it's easier talking to somebody else. It's sitting here and basically talking to myself about stuff. <laughs> that I'm not fully versed in that just makes me You're nervous. talking to you're you're not just talking to me, you're talking to everyone. I know, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's part of it. You you have a live community out there, friends. These yeah. are friends and family. <laughs> Friends and family. <laughs> <laughs> and you have more friends and family than most. You have you have actual family members that listen. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of my family don't even know what I do for a living. <laughs> I've, been do I've been doing this for, you know, a decade yeah, plus. Yeah, over 10 years, and, right? And people are, are kind of like, what exactly is a podcast? How is that? How's it's that podcasting? Show, how's that podcasting you're doing? That it's like that that little hobby. Like that I'm little a little hobby. <laughs> like I'm in a basement with a glue gun and some yarn, and <laughs> oh, gosh. people do not even remotely. If you're like fifty plus, mm -hmm. there's so many fifty plus year olds that have no clue. They they think you're in the basement with like a transistor radio <laughs> and some aluminum foil <laughs> down there. <laughs> it still shocks me that people don't understand what a podcast is. Yeah, I, it's pretty self explanatory. I mean, <laughs> no, no, it's not. No, it's not for people for certain it's people radio. that are of the older demographic. <laughs> you know, if it's not television and radio, it's not real. But it is radio. It's basically radio. It's just on yes. an app. <laughs> <laughs> like, you don't understand how many people we've had conversations, that I've had conversations with that are of the older era, mm -hmm. and they cannot wrap their head around streaming or podcasts. That's mm -hmm. just so foreign to them. <laughs> uh, especially when I go back home and I talk to some people that are older mm -hmm. and, you know, they still listen to the AM FM radio and they, you know, cable hey, television is kind of new. Sometimes sometimes I still listen to FM radio. So <laughs> of course. <laughs> you know, as a matter of fact, I was at GSMC, I was talking to one of the new sales reps, and he's an older gentleman. And he was talking about how how long he's been doing this. Mm -hmm. And he was talking about the challenges of when he was when he was younger, he had to sell 
FM radio and people didn't understand it. And he had to explain <laughs> and educate people on FM radio. I'm like, FM radio? Like, <laughs> it's in your car. What do you mean? <laughs> you, have to, you, have to, you gotta teach people what FM radio is. I'm like, oh, wow. This is like yeah. Morris code? What are you, what are you doing? <laughs> Morris code, smoke signals? What the heck was going on back then? <laughs> <laughs> so oh, sorry for anyone that's older we're not making fun of you but no. it's just it's just different when people like there's so many people that are older mm -hmm. uh that just don't understand like what do you mean you have a show <laughs> yeah. <with>? like yeah <laughs> <laughs> is that am or fm <laughs> <laughs> so oh, all right gosh. so what do you have for us today faith all righty. So Ryan Poles promised to do right by Justin Fields. Uh, Ryan Bo Poles promised to do right by Justin Fields this offseason, and it appears that he has made uh, good on that promise. According to Ian Rappaport, the Bears had several offers for Fields this offseason, but sent him to Pittsburgh because that's what Fields preferred. It's no surprise to hear that Fields wanted to join the Steelers to play behind Russell Wilson, assuming he didn't have any opportunities to start. Fields modeled his game after Wilson, so now he'll have the opportunity to learn from Wilson himself. Um, Justin Fields commented, I would say when I was younger, like maybe 8th, ninth grade, it was more Cam Newton, but when but I would say these past couple of years, I've kind of turned more to the Russell Wilson, Russell Wilson type quarterback, Fields said right after the Bears drafted him in 2021. I've watched a lot of film on him. I've watched a lot of highlights on him. So I think the things that we can do on the field with both of those quarterbacks, I think we have a lot of similarities between extending plays with our legs and also having the arm talent. So I think those are a couple of guys that I kind of emulate my game after. I've always looked up to him, Fields said about Wilson uh, later in 2021, the kind of person he is on the field and off the field. He's a great quarterback and a great person. Um, Steelers head coach Mike Tomlin told Fields that he will begin uh, the year as Wilson's backup, but the Bears will want Fields to take over as the starter at some point next year. According to multiple reports, the 2025 six-round draft pick that the Bears received from Pittsburgh will turn into a 2025 fourth rounder if Fields plays 51% of the Steelers' snaps. Even if Fields spends the whole year as a backup yet this year, there's a chance he rebuilds his image enough to compete for a starting job in 2025. Um, that's what fellow former Bears first round pick um, Mitch Trubisky uh, did mm -hmm. across the 2021 and 2022 season. After the Bears decided to roll with Fields, Trubisky signed on with the Bills to back up Josh Allen. One season later, the Steelers again made Trubisky their starter. So, Okay, remember yesterday we were talking about this and already they're saying, hey, we want Russ to be our starter. Right. But at some point, we mm -hmm. are going to transition to Justin Fields. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why I was saying I kind of feel for Russ mm -hmm. because it's already starting to come, you know, it's already the plan. It goes from, hey, Russ, it's going to be our guy to, oh, we've went out and got uh, Justin Fields. Right. At some point, we want to transition to uh justin fields being our quarterback so mm -hmm. the clock is ticking on russell wilson it's already just said right here just in this article now the main point of this article is the fact that the bears ownership group wanted to do right by justin fields Mm -hmm. And that there were a lot of, there were a, a few other, I'm not going to say a lot, there were a few other offers on the table, but they sent him where he wanted to go. I'm saying there's some truth to that, but it's a little, I, I feel like it could be some revisionist history as well. Mm -hmm. And here's the reason why. I'm going to tell you this right now. If a team came out and said, hey, 
we want to give we'll give you a, a late first round or an early second round pick for Justin Fields. And the Bears, the Bears aren't going around saying, no, 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 he wants to go to Pittsburgh. We're going to take a sixth round pick. Mm-hmm. That is not happening. It sounded, this makes me think that there were some other late round picks, maybe a fifth or something like that, where it wasn't anything major because this could turn into as much as a fourth. And so if the picks are close, then they're like, hey, let's send him where he wants to go. Mm-hmm. But it still, it still solidifies for me. There were no first, there were no second, and there were no third round picks that were available for Justin Field. Maybe a late fourth or something like that. Uh, it sounds like also that maybe the Giants kind of kick the tires on possibly going with Justin Fields as well. Um, interesting how how things worked out. But no, I, I it does show me that the Bears at least listened to Justin Fields and that Justin Fields wanted to go and play with Russ. Um, told me a lot of, you know, one, he admired Cam Newton and modeled mm-hmm. his game early on in the Cam Newton. But then when he got closer to the NFL, when he got to the NFL, he started watching a lot more film on Russ. That's a good move. I would love to see them take the time, let him work with Russ. Maybe Russ can kind of tweak his game, uh, Justin Fields' game a little bit. I with how dynamic these two guys are and how how athletic Justin Fields is, I would love to see them even work some plays where you could have both of those guys on the field at the same time or putting in special packages, kind of what some other teams have done. They have a unique situation here where I would love to see them really take advantage of it and Mike Tomlins is one of those one of those coaches that can get can get creative when and use the weapons that he has it is it's a good place for both of those guys unfortunately there can only be one Mm -hmm. and everything that I know everything that I'm seeing Russ is on borrow time You, you know I could see I could also see a situation where Russ gets the first half of the season because of the fact that in the contract, if Justin Field plays more than half of the half of the team snaps, it goes from a sixth to a, to a fourth. Mm-hmm. So I'm saying the timeline is week nine. They play they play the first nine weeks with uh Russell Wilson and then later on in the season they switch to Justin Fields Mm -hmm. that's kind of the way I feel at some point everything in my gut tells me Russ won't finish the season as the starter for the Pittsburgh Steelers Mm -hmm. unfortunately unless unless Russ comes in and absolutely balls out Mm -hmm. but you're gonna you, you know it's hard it's going to be hard to ball out on a schedule where you got to play the Ravens twice. Mm -hmm. You got to play the Browns who are an incredibly strong team. Uh, You're going to have to play the Cincinnati Bengals twice who will have Joe Burrow back. You're in a meat grinder of a division where actually you're the worst team in that division. Mm -hmm. And Russ will have no room for mistakes. Mm -hmm. Like I said, two losses in a row and everyone is going to want Justin Fields on the field. So that's the reason why I see this as major challenges for Mm -hmm. him. Well, how do you think um, Justin Fields will do as a starter with the Steelers? You know, I was kind of uh, talking I was messaging back and forth with Nelson from 
Mm -hmm. uh, the GSMC basketball podcast. Mm -hmm. And he's not a big believer in Justin Fields. And mm -hmm. he he does not think that Justin Fields is gonna is gonna do well, that he was not a successful quarterback in Chicago. And right. he really a paraphrase, not I'm putting words, I'm just kind of paraphrasing what he was saying where we're messaging back and forth that he doesn't it doesn't sound like he really sees justin field doing well in pittsburgh either i'm not to that level i think he was not in a good situation in chicago and being in pittsburgh i think it's going to be a better situation where he's going to get every opportunity mm -hmm. to succeed but like I said before, you're in a division where it's incredibly tough. The Ravens could be the best team in the entire AFC, if not the best team in the NFL. The Browns are a top team. Mm -hmm. uh, the Bengals are a top team. You have three teams that are Super Bowl caliber teams trying to, you know, make the Super Bowl. The Steelers are not on that level. It's going to be tough for either Russ or Justin Field or them both to do, to, you know, to really shine. It's going to be a tough go, mm -hmm. in my opinion. I'm caught up on the way you say Bengals. <laughs> oh, why do you say Bengals? What is wrong with Bengals? Bengals. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how do you say it? Bengals. Bengals. I say bingles, you say bangles. <laughs> tomato, tomato. <laughs> uh, I saw you make that little smile you made there. I was like, look at you. I've never <laughs> heard someone call them the bingles. That's <laughs> <laughs> the Cincinnati Bengals. <laughs> You're like the Cincinnati Bengals. Bengals. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a I'm a Midwest, Northeast Ohio guy, so I guess I say it that way. And yeah, I'm a Southern girl. <laughs> yes, so I'm fascinating there. Yeah, it is going to be interesting to see um, how Justin Fields does under Russell Wilson and see how Russell Wilson will mentor Justin Fields and see. I mean, the thing is, Russ is that Russ, people give Russ a hard time, but Russ is a good guy. He's a mm -hmm. consummate professional. Even in that horrible situation in Denver, mm -hmm. he took the high road. He took the classy route. Um, from everything I see, he has a good relationship with Justin Fields, and he is genuinely happy to, to work with Justin right. Fields. Mm -hmm. You can't ask for a better situation where you have a guy that's going to mentor him. Um, I don't know if sometimes you have to take a little bit of a selfish approach. And I worry that if Russ does not take a selfish approach, it could be a bad thing for the rest of Russ's career mm -hmm. and could really hurt him. Because if he does not, if he does not shine now, they're gonna look at it and say, hey. His last years in Seattle, not so great. He didn't do well in Denver, even though you can say bad situation. But mm -hmm. the two years in Denver, bad situation. Then he goes to Pittsburgh, and he was benched for Justin Field. Mm -hmm. That's the way. That's going to be the narrative around there, around mm -hmm. Russ, mm -hmm. and Russ is going to end up could easily find himself make a wrong turn into backup bill mm -hmm. where he's the number two quarterback, not a number one. Mm -hmm. uh, and then if in that case, when you're starting to think about a backup quarterback, do you, if you're drafting a quarterback, you're not going to want, you know, a guy like Russell Wilson with a big name, to be mm -hmm. breathing down the neck of your young quarterback. So you could easily have a situation where he's like Cam Newton, where he's having a power of time finding the landing place. Right. You know, so that's the thing that Russ has to really, really work, uh, watch out for. Mm -hmm. so. Well, 
hope it works out for them. I feel good. <laughs> that sounds so nice. I hope I hope it's nice <laughs> I hope and they it works play well out together. For them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, with that, we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to discuss uh, Kenny Pickett. Uh, we'll be backing up Jalen Hurts. So make sure you guys stick around. <laughs> 